welcome back everyone so this video will just be a quick supplement to the last one in the last video i mainly talked about the theory and here i want to go into the code and have a look at what i did and how it can be implemented with pytorch so this is the project and there are a couple of files and i would just go over each of the files so let's start with the config file this is just configuration for the training here I specified the supported edges and the same for the supported atomic numbers and the atom types. What I also have here is the maximum molecule size, so an upper bound, and this is mainly used for the predicted matrices. So the next file is the dataset file and the dataset is something I already talked about in the previous videos. One thing I added here is that I now consider this maximum molecule size. And I also discard all atoms that have unsupported atom types. And with those two, the data set is now much smaller. So previously it was around 40,000 or 80,000. I'm not sure anymore. But now it is reduced to only 18,000. So, and if you change in the config file, this max molecule size, you will need to rerun this data set and this can be done by deleting everything in the process directory. So then we have a train file. There's not much going on here. I just load the data, put it into a data loader, which comes from PyTorch Geometric, load the model, and then I specify a loss function and this loss function is stored in utils. And then I have this function run one epoch which simply enumerates the data loader, passes everything to the model, uses the output to calculate the loss and some other metrics and everything is sampled to MLflow and that's pretty much it. So I run 100 epochs and every five epochs I start a test epoch. Maybe one more remark. So in this run one epoch function, I have also a sample function. So if it's type test, then it will sample and I specify 10,000 molecules to test if anything was generated. Now let's have a look at the model file. It's also pretty simple. So there are a couple of configurations here like the hidden dimension, so the, the latent vector size, the number of hidden neurons in the fully connected network and a couple of other things. Essentially, I pass the input graph using these convolutional layers through that encoder and finally apply a pooling operation. In this case, it's the set to set layer, which is a special kind of pooling operation. Essentially, it uses LSTMs to pull these individual node feature vectors into a global graph level vector. Then I have two linear layers that output the mean and variance for the latent vector. And that's pretty much all for the encoder. Then I have the decoder and the decoder consists only of linear layers. So it's a fully connected network. First, I have two linear layers that are shared. So the latent vector, so you can see the input for that is the latent embedding size. And that's exactly the output of the encoder. This is connected to two shared layers. And then there is a third layer which outputs in one case the atoms and in the other case the edges. So it's a one shot generation of all atoms and all edges. And in the case of the atoms, we have a shape of maximum number of atoms. So for example, 20, which was specified in this config file times the number of atom types, which also comes from here. So these are those. And that finally plus one, because we also want that non-type. So we want to give the model the chance to also say no atom. For the edges, I said it's the triangular upper part. And that means we have the maximum number of atoms times the maximum number of atoms minus one divided by two. That's exactly the upper triangular part. And now we have that for each of the edge types. So not only single, but also double, triple and aromatic. 
and then we have plus one because we also want to give the model the chance to predict no edge. And these linear layers then simply outputs a flattened version of these two matrices and later in the loss function we can shape it back and use it to compare it against the actual values. So when this model is called uh, it will go into this forward function and here we have first an encoder part and this sends it through the encoder which simply passes the input features and the edge information and all of that through these GNN layers, applies the pooling, which is that set to set operation, and then the mean and variance. And then we get the output values here. Then the sampling is performed by using the reparameterization trick, which I explained already in the last video. And then finally everything, so by everything I mean this vector, this sampled vector goes into the decoder and here I iterate over each of the graphs in the batch and decode the graph and this happens in this function which simply passes this latent vector through these linear layers to get the atom logits and the edge logits. So now there's one more function in the model file and that is sample moles and this is supposed to sample molecules so we iterate over each of the specified molecules. So in this case, we want to sample 10,000. The first step is to sample the latent space. And this can be done by sampling from a normal distribution. And this gives us a latent vector with the same size as the one that our model expects. And then we pass that simply through the model, so through the decoder. And this gives us the output, so the triangular upper part of these matrices and the node logits. And those are converted back with these couple of reshape operations and we convert the, the logits to atomic numbers and then everything is passed through this graph representation to molecule function which is in utils. So we will have a look at this in a second. And this essentially returns none or a smile string. If it's none, it means no valid molecule. If it's a smile string, we can check if this smile string is valid. And what I mean by that is that it might be the case that there is a dot in a smile string. And if that is the case, it means that the molecule is disconnected. So it's not a fully connected graph, but it's it might be several graphs. And so if those two cases are not the case, then we can say, okay, there was successfully a smile string generated by the decoder. Now let's have a look at the last and biggest file, which is this utils file. Here I have a couple of helper functions, such as counting the parameters, calculating the KL divergence, slicing the targets from the graphs. So all of these functions that do some helping work, but are not super important right now. So the only important function here is actually the loss function. This loss function iterates over each of the graphs and calculates the approximate reconstruction loss and then combines it for the whole batch with the KL divergence and this is the final loss used by the model. So let's have a look at what this approximate reconstruction loss does. So this loss is exactly what is described in this paper and actually there is even an open source implementation of this which can be found here. This implementation, however, is in TensorFlow and not in PyTorch. So to simplify this, I thought let's use another breakpoint here. So now let's have a look at how these matrices look like and what exactly is happening in this loss function. So the input to that are the targets, which for example look like this. So here we have 0, 0 and here 0 means that we have node, so an atom of type C, so carbon. So it would be carbon, carbon, nitrogen, and so on. And a five would be the fifth index in this list. And then we have the predictions. And the predictions have a shape of that. So we first have to reshape them because they are flattened. And this exactly is happening in this part. So let's go here. And now this matrix has a shape 
of 20, which is the maximum molecule size, times 10, which are the supported atom types, plus the non-type. And now let's have a look at how the values here look. So these are predictions for each of the atoms and the prediction which atom type they have. So this is the first matrix and the same happens for the triangular upper part. So this can also be reshaped and then we get a prediction matrix with the shape of 190, which are the triangular upper indices times five and five means the five edge types. So for example, here, the biggest value would correspond to no edge, single, double, triple, aromatic. And now in the first place, we want to check the square difference between the sum of all atom types versus the actual atom types and the sum of all edge types versus the actual edge types. So let's go here. For example, we have the predictions, so we can cast that to int. So here it's nonsense, but the true values look like this. So we have 13, 3, 2. So that means 13 C atoms, 3 nitrogen and so on. And for the edges, we have targets that look like this. So seven and actually the, the non-types are discarded here. So that's also done in the, in the real paper. Um, so single, so no bonds are discarded. That would be a single bond, double bond, triple bond, aromatic. And now we simply calculate the square difference between those two. And this gives us a node and edge loss. So for example, the node loss looks like this, 171, and the edge loss looks like this. And so we have a single value that tells us how close is the reconstruction to the number of atoms and the number of edges in the original graph. And now to enforce the model to arrange the matrices, we need to also consider the pairs, so the connections between atoms and edges. Again, this will only reconstruct the graph approximately and it might not lead to a valid reconstruction. So the hope is the more of these loss terms we include, the better the reconstruction will be. And for this, I have one more function here, which is called calculate node edge pair loss. And this calculates these pairs. And as you can see, it's a bit more complex. So to summarize it, we multiply all of the edges with all of the nodes and the numbers that come out are telling us how many node edge pairs of a specific type we have. So let's jump right here. Yes, so that's the predicted matrix and that's the real matrix. So here in the first dimension, we have the different types, for example, C, nitrogen, and so on. And in the other dimension, we have the edge types. So single, double, triple aromatic. And here it shows that we have 203 nodes of type C with a single edge and 11 C with a double edge and so on. And the model should now be able to reconstruct that matrix as close as possible and this will eventually tell us something about the structure of the molecule. And now there's a third part, which again, multiplies this with the node types. And this gives us this node edge node loss. And this tells us how many of these we have for a specific node node pair. So C to single bond to C would then be the first dimension, for example. I first implemented this using this node edge node loss, but this was somehow too restrictive. So again, the current model is not working properly. I tried to implement it, but somehow it didn't work for me. So it needs some fine tuning. Now I would say we run this and it iterates. So that is one epoch. And yeah, I will pause the video here and come back 
in a couple of minutes so that we can see what the model is able to reconstruct. All right, so here we are back in the fourth epoch and here in this approximate reconstruction loss function, I print if the model is able to reconstruct all edges and all nodes. So for example, in this batch or for this molecule, the model predicts that, so seven, so seven um, carbon atoms, two nitrogen, and so on. And the true values are eight to two. So let's have a look at another one. Here it predicts that, and the true values are that. So it is kind of close, but still not perfect. And once it doesn't predict the correct atom types, it will, of course, also never reconstruct fully the molecule. So, and as you can see, differently sized molecules are already partially correct predicted in the fourth epoch. So this will be more and more the longer the model trains. So this is a good sign that the model is able to reconstruct the nodes and edges. But what I realized is that the model is almost never able to reconstruct this node edge loss. So if we have a look here, this is the real matrix with the node types and the edge types. So 85 carbons with an edge one. And uh, here are the predictions. So they're far away or not far away, but at least not very close to what the molecule actually looks like. So another example, this is what, okay, this is, closer but it's never on point and that means it never fully reconstructed a molecule but it might be the case that this can be handled by doing some hyperparameter tuning playing around with the loss function and so on and regarding the sampling i sampled some molecules but they were disconnected so they had a dot in their uh, smile string and uh, so those are invalid molecules. So that's mainly it for this series because at the moment I'm not able to generate molecules. I hoped that it would be easier, but apparently it's a very difficult task and therefore I cannot move on with the next topics. So I would close this series at this point and I will make some independent videos for the next topics. I have the feeling that it will take much more time to get this running. Anyways, I hope that this project was as educational for you as it was for me and maybe it serves as a kickstarter for your project in case you want to try to generate molecules. I will maybe come back to this project in the future and also try out other approaches like Molgan and I hope that with those approaches I will finally be able to generate molecules and even molecules with desired properties. So that's all for this series. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.